And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Big Josh, Josh Thompson, look at you, you big stud you. <laughs> My God. I don't know if I can take any more of this type of abuse. This is horrible, but welcome to the Weighing In Podcast, where my man, Big Josh Thompson, is going to just delineate some incredible information yes. for, to everyone about what's going to be going on in the world of MMA. We've got, let's see, the PFL coming up. we got another UFC coming up, and we are getting closer, closer, my man, to UFC 300. We might even talk about the... The odds on that a little mm -hmm. bit might be a good thing to do. Yeah, we're going to break down some stuff. We're going to have some fun with this today, man. I mean, John oh, in his well. new studio, feeling refreshed and revived. I mean, I'm, I'm excited, I'm man. I'm not refreshed and revived. You know how hard it was for me to try to figure out how to put this crap together to make this work? I am, I got a headache. It's so weird, right? Like you, you can lay the cable all the way out to the, to the other studio. You can lay wiring and all this other, but to hook up a computer is just, it's beyond your your capabilities. This is way beyond hooking up a computer here, baby. Super simple. <laughs> Super simple. Super simple. Oh, it's man. So simple. Okay, guys, before we get started, though, I want you guys to smash that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for subscribing to this channel. Make sure you guys subscribe to us. Hit the bells and the thumbs up. So those of you guys that are new to our channel, I want to let you guys know how this works. We basically break down the fights, the fights that are coming up for this weekend and this midweek show. We talk, we'll talk UFC uh, coming up this weekend. What what number is this? UFC? Vegas 90. Vegas 90. Because there's a bunch of different numbers and names that they have for them now. So, but you got uh, Brennan Allen fight, fighting Chris Curtis. We're going to break down that card. We'll also break down the PFL. And we will talk a little bit about some other things uh, that are brewing. But we really try to save the main news clips for separate clips that we'll release throughout the week. So that's why it's important for you guys to hit the bell and the thumbs up and the notifications. So you guys can get those uh, releases when they come out. So we, this show will drop uh, tomorrow morning. Today is Tuesday for us. It'll drop Wednesday morning early. And um, so hopefully you guys hit that bell, subscribe button, and uh, thank you guys so much for continuing to support us. So, uh, John, there's a lot going on, man, in the sport of MMA. You got PFL starting their first round of tournaments this weekend in San Antonio. Their season opener. Yep, and then you've got, uh, main, you've got the UFC 93 is what you said? 90. 90. 90 UFC 90. 90, and uh, this is a rematch. You got this is yeah. You got the rematch between Brennan Allen and Chris Curtis. Yeah. Tell me, John, what are you thinking, buddy? Well, you know, it is a rematch. And I, I, I'm trying to think back, but I do believe that Brendan Allen's last loss was to Chris. Curtis. I think it is. And you yeah. can take a look at there. You go. Dave pulls it up, and yes, it was with a win over Sam Alvey there. Jacob Malkoon, who we know is an outstanding tough fighter, mm -hmm. Jotko, tough. Guy from Poland, Andre Muniz, who was on fire for a while there. Bruno Silva, Paul Craig. The real question when you look at all of this, Brendan Allen is getting better. There's no doubt he's getting better. His stand-up is better. He's always had a good ground game. Uh, but he's more confident in his stand-up. And the way that he, uh, he decides to attack his opponent is just a cleaner, more technical way. The real question is, he's going against the kind of guy that he should be looking to take down. Chris Curtis is the guy, don't just stand with him. Chris Curtis, the action man, is the guy that, that's his strength. That's what he does. He He's all about being in the stand-up war and landing big, heavy shots that wear you down and break you down, and then finally, all of a sudden, you make a bigger mistake, and he takes advantage of it. So just like we saw with the, you know, the Paul Craig thing, you know, a lot of people thought Brendan Allen would never try to take Paul Craig down. Well, it was Paul Craig really trying to take Brendan out, but he stayed there, and he did great work there, and he ended up getting the rear naked choke for the submission. I look at this fight. If Brendan Allen fights it smart, this is his fight mm -hmm. to win. He, uh, he just needs to use his hands to get into the situation where he can get Chris Curtis to the mat and then use your superior skills on the ground because he is really good there. John, do me a favor. Pull your mic up a little bit because it sounds like yes, sir. it's a little far away from you. All right. There we go. Oh, Better? I like to hear that beautiful voice. Oh, I like to hear voice is <laughs> like gra It's like gravel. Um, but no, uh, I would have to agree with you. I think Brennan Allen right now, too, with the confidence and knowing that Chris Curtis was his last loss 
and that didn't yeah. sit well with him understanding how the fight uh laid out at the end of that like he understands like if i would just stay with my game plan would have just stuck in move utilize my grappling and my wrestling a little bit i think he would have had uh, a good chance of winning that fight this time it's it, i think this time now with the confidence what is it two four six six fight win streak you know fighters that when they're after they've won two three they feel like they almost can't be beat like everything they're doing yeah. in the gym is working it's working yeah. for me. This foot sweep is working for me. This double leg is working for me. The way I'm hitting off th this, this combination and then hitting the takedown right after, it's all gelling for me. And so I think right now he's found his stride. He's, I mean, I know that he was supposed to have a step up in competition, but this is a good fight for him in terms of redemption. And I think that he's focused. I think he's going to be determined. And I think he knows he has all the skills in the, in the toolbox to get this win. Now, Chris Curtis, though, knows that I've already got the win over him. I know I can do it again. I've just got to let a little bit more output happen. I know I got the win the last time, but I've got to be more, I've got to have more output. I have to be busy. I've got to be busier. Yeah. He's got to be a busier fighter because sometimes he lets the fight slip away because he's waiting for that one shot. He's waiting for that one big shot to land that's going to put you down so I could try to finish you, whatever it is. But uh, Chris Curtis, man, is always fun to watch. And Brennan Allen right now is really kind of coming into his own. He's honestly probably one, maybe two fights away from a title shot. I think he gets, yeah. he gets a dominant performance right now over Chris Curtis, which is a redemption fight for him. Scroll back to, to his uh, win streak, Brennan Allen. He'd have, what, nine, ten fights a win, in a win streak if he didn't lose to Chris Curtis. Six, yeah, I think the seven, loss eight. before that was Strickland. Yeah, it been so nine. that's Chris Curtis's training partner. Yeah, there you go. So it would have been it would have been a nine fight win streak had he not lost to Chris Curtis. So that puts him right into that talk of okay, look, he got the one back from Chris Curtis that he lost. Let's start talking about maybe a title shot. You know that puts him in that top category. Now he's got to get a win, I think, over somebody ranked in the top three or four before they start allowing him to to get that title shot. But I think it's there because all those guys have kind of. They've all, you've got Sean Strickland, you've got Drickus, and you've got Izzy. Those three guys are all interchangeable, to be honest. You know yep. what I did there? A little interchangeable. Yeah, here. It was very, very nice. nice. Okay. Uh, for those of you guys listening on our uh, audio platforms, I was just doing like waves with my hands. Nothing big. All right. Uh, but, but Chris Curtis, uh, I mean, not Chris, but Brendan Allen has an opportunity to put himself right in that title talk. And that mix with those three guys. Oh, there's no doubt about it. He's right in that position. You know, this is, you know, performance is everything. And you're, he was put in the position. You got to figure, you know, Chris Curtis is coming into this as a replacement. Mm -hmm. It was Marvin Vittori. That was the fight that was going to be, you know, either Brendan Allen showing that, hey, I belong or I'm not quite there yet. You know, we don't know, you know which way that would have gone, but I actually think it would have gone fairly well for him. Mm -hmm. He has been fighting very well. Yeah. And it doesn't matter who they put in front of him. He's been fighting smart fights fights that what he's doing in the cage is the way he needs to approach his opponent and to get the win and he's he's doing very well with it like you said i think his confidence is, is as as high now as it's ever been absolutely absolutely uh go back over to the main card now next fight alex hernandez versus uh damon jackson yeah not the fight that i would have thought would have been the uh Co-main. The co-main event of the evening, but this is what happens just mm -hmm. before you're getting to that that uh UFC 300 number. But you know, Alexander Hernandez, we know we know what he's you know good at. We know that he's his stand up. He's got power in his hands. He's got speed. Damon Jackson on the ground is damn good, mm -hmm. damn good, and he knows that he's way better on the ground than Alexander. Hernandez is and it's just a question of can he get the fight there because you're going to see Hernandez doing everything he can to make sure that the fight does not hit the ground and he just picks Damon Jackson apart on the feet and Damon Jackson is going to be on the feet long enough to try to work towards that takedown but to get this fight to the ground is the way for Damon Jackson to get that victory yeah Damon Jackson doesn't have bad stand-up like he no. he's not afraid to throw it. He lets it. He's all. long and rangy. Yeah, he is long and rangy. Is that tall, long and lanky? And he knows how to use it. The long kicks, the long jab, the long. Uh, he dips his head a little bit straight down. You know when he throws his jab and his punches. Um, Alex Hernandez to me is the better athlete, and probably physically stronger. I just I don't. So. He just tends not to fight with strong fight IQ. He's like Michael yeah. Chandler's little brother. 
is basically what it is. <laughs> Uh, Damon Jackson, though, is you know he just finds ways. He can grit it out. He's been he's been hit and rocked with some big shots and come back and got victories. I mean, yeah. he is he's a gritty, gritty fighter. Don't they call him the Leech? Isn't that his nickname, yeah, the Leech? I believe it. I is. believe it is. But he he's That's just someone true. like you said the, when he gets a nasty nickname. Yeah, when he gets to you, he's able. Oh, action! Action! Jack. Oh, now it's action. Okay, okay. I think he I changed it. it. Um, no, but no, he, I, he, he's got, he's got great, um, submissions. He's good in kind of good with his control can do some good ground and pound. Very talented fighter. The movement of Alexander Hernandez is going to be a problem though. The mo- way he yeah, moves, but- the way he strikes off of his movement is going to be a problem. He's got a little bit of power in himself, but he does tend to slow down a little bit as the fight goes on. Cause he throws everything with so much power. He leaves himself but I think open. If, if you're Alexander, you're taking a look at. The last fight for Damon Jackson, I think that was Billy Q. Ah. And, you know, take a take a little bit of, a, you know, a little bit of the script out of what you saw Billy Q do. Yeah, look at there, right there. Billy mm-hmm. Q was the last one, and you saw Billy Q putting pressure mm-hmm. on him, keeping the fight and the stand-up for the most part, and that's exactly what Hernandez needs to do to walk away with Well, it's hard to get those takedowns when you're moving backwards. I'm the leech. Yep. I know that he's the leech also, but I thought his name was the leech. I think they used to call him the leech. Um, can you look it up, Dave? I bet you it is. It used to be his name was the leech. Um, was it? I believe so. Okay. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, where Damon, like where Alexander Hernandez just put the pressure. There it was right there. The leech. There it is. See? Boom. Yeah, see? All you guys give me a hard time about CT. I just proved I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I look, I look at Damon Jackson. He, a lot of times it's hard to get the takedowns going backwards. Mm-hmm. As you start retreating backwards, it's hard to get the momentum going forward to drive through your opponent and get the takedown. So if Alexander Hernandez could use, um, the, the fast hands to touch him a little bit, get him moving backwards, use power shots as he gets him to the fence and then keep yeah. his space in his range. Cause Damon Jackson is also long as well and try not to get taken down. They can have a good chance of getting the win next fight. Morgan Scherer versus Jose Mariscal. This is a featherweight matchup. I think Mariscal, this is either his... I think he's got two fights already in the UFC. Click on Mariscal, this should please. be his third one. I think Scherer's only had one. So, could be wrong about that, but I think that's right. Two. Two for yep. Uh, Jose. Yep. For Mariscal, yeah. One for him. I believe this is his second coming up. Yeah. Yep. Look at that. Oh, no yeah. CT in this guy. <laughs> uh, but it's really, you know, both, both of them in the UFC, uh-huh. both, you know, they haven't lost yet. It's a good matchup. They match up really well. Um, Mariscal can, can fight everywhere. Scherer really likes to be on his feet and be fancy and stuff. It's a matter of who is the guy that decides to utilize their biggest skill. And that should be Mariscal trying to get this fight down. John, what's your take on the UFC throwing in these these guys that not a lot of people have heard of? Okay, and yeah. that you look down the card, you've got Court McGee and Alex Morano, you've got Charlie Campbell, who's a fantastic. You say it fighter. all the time. You've got to you say it. You got to build the young talent, and you mix them up into the middle. I understand that. Yep. Um, but I would have thought like you would have taken the young talent like a Charlie Campbell and put him on the main card. You would have taken Alex Morano and Court McKee and put him on the main card because they are – Court McKee's not young. But I'm saying like having those guys with some name value mixed in. You've had two – you have two – the main event and the co-main event. But then the rest of the card trickling down all the way down into Charlie Campbell is not, not big name. Like normally it's just one or two guys that you want to try to mix in that – into that main thing. Yeah. And still give those, give the fans, um, your hardcore fans, you got, the main card. But this is a, exactly what you're talking about. You got, okay, you got Norman Dumont going up against mm-hmm. Jermaine Durandamy coming back. It's kind of a good story. Yeah. It's kind of a good thing coming back from, you know, having a baby and all that stuff. And she was the first featherweight uh, women's champion in the UFC. She's a freaking phenomenal fighter she's a great person and she's not even on the main card no you know you've got you've got people there that you know a lot of people have not heard you know and it is it's questionable you look and you go but i honestly think it's 
they're looking and saying, look, how much longer is someone like Jermaine going to be fighting? Mm -hmm. And we need to, you know, get these young people out there with people putting their eyes on them. Not everyone's putting their eyes on the prelims. They're putting their eyes more onto the main card. So I'm going to put these guys on the main card. Yeah, the guy that I'm looking forward to watching is Charlie Campbell. He fought over Bellator a couple of times. It was fantastic fight. A He's a tough SOB. Uh, Trevor Peak is also very tough. Doesn't look like much when you see him get out there, but then as he starts oh, putting he hands on you, he can fight. Yeah, he, can fight. he can fight. And so Charlie's got his hands full in this fight. You know, Trevor Peak being nine and one, Charlie Campbell being eight and two. Charlie, man, he's, I think they call it, his nickname is the Hannibal. The Cannibal or the Hannibal? It? I think it's. <laughs> I'm not too sure what his nickname is, but I'll tell you what. Charlie that Campbell. Dude can le- he will leg kick the he will leg kick you to death. Yeah, he's got great kicks. You know, the cannibal. There you go. I mean, he'd be eating people up, man. He'd be eating them up. <laughs> Just nom, he's nom, tough. nom, nom. <laughs> what is he out? He's, a, he's out of uh, Longo Sarah, is I believe. He? I believe so. Let me see where is he is. East Rockwall, New York. Yeah, Longo Weidman. There you Longo go. Weidman. Boom, excuse me. <clears throat> Not Longo, sir. I, I had the wrong half. The slash was wrong. Longo Weidman. I mean, hopefully he's not picking up the eye pokes, but we'll... Um, <laughs> oh! Nah, it was a little, little low there. blow there. Had to go there. But uh, let's go into... Like like you talked about Jermaine Duran me a little bit and Norma Dumont. Yep. I mean, Jermaine coming back. World-class kickboxer. I've sparred with her plenty of times. Um, I tell the story all the time. She came in on one of my rounds. I was getting ready for Gil Melendez's last fight. Face, She's baby. spinning back at me right in the face. So I fucking body slammed her and threw her around, hit her to the body. I was so mad, man. I was like, you came in on the fifth round. She fucking went yeah. hard. I was so mad. I, Javier was like, Josh, Josh. I was like, no, no, Javier. Uh, Josh, she likes it. No, 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 she no, no, likes no, no, it no. rough. She Should likes it. Excuse me. Excuse me, BJ. I was so fucking mad. Oh, she's. But then I apologized afterwards. Uh, I love it. I mean, it's better to ask for forgiveness. And she, she yes, apologized yes, for yes, kicking me in the face and. I apologize for fucking mauling her. Well, I mean, but you can you can actually take a look at some of these fights. You know, Cynthia Carveo. Yeah. You know, she's down there, you know, in the fourth fight of the night and stuff. You know, this is someone that was headlining. Yeah. You know, she's a main event at, at a certain point. It's just that you can see where they're trying to bring in and get people to, you know, recognize some of the younger talent. Mm-hmm. It's, it's what a promotion's got to do. So I, I, I understand it. But yeah. There, there's some, you know, the Court McGee, Alex Morano. You know, people don't give Alex Morano enough credit. That dude looks like, you know, the guy that is going to get picked on mm-hmm. at the local freaking, you know, pizza shop. And he is until you start picking on him and he starts whipping your ass. And he'll do it in the stand up or he'll do it on the ground because he's just good everywhere. We talked about this. I don't I can't remember which fighter we were talking about, but I was like, if you don't look the part, sometimes they don't get promoted the way that they should. That's true. And Alex Morano is one of them. He's a damn good fighter. He's got good grappling. He doesn't utilize it, but his nope. stand-up is good. He'll take a shot. He'll deliver a shot. I mean, he's fun to watch fight. I, I just The way he kind of stands more up on his toes, kind of walks yeah. you down, delivers the shots, the kicks. He doesn't do anything spectacular, but nope. he's definitely someone that nope. I enjoy watching fight. They say, damn, he could fight, though. But then you have guys like Dan Argueta and you have uh, uh, Matsumoto, like 14 and 0 versus 9 and 1. Why are you not like they're bantamweight? The records kind of speak for themselves, pushing them up more towards the top. Let those records, that's something. I, but look, I guess I'm, like we're sitting here trying to, I, I mean, I, I'm sitting here trying to criticize the UFC. They're the best in the business at, at promoting fighters and fights. So they know what they're doing. I get it. I understand. They yep. know what they're doing. Yep. Yep. But um, all right. Well, hey guys, that's gonna wrap up our UFC talk. And uh, before we move on, go to onlyfans.com slash Wayne in onlyfans.com slash Wayne in. Subscribe to us over there. I'm gonna do a live show this week, uh, you know, for you guys, and uh, maybe we we'll get Big John on as well. But uh, I'm thinking probably tomorrow night around eight thirty Central Time. Tomorrow night, eight thirty Central Time. Onlyfans.com slash Wayne in. Subscribe to us. It's free. Subscribe to us over there. It is free. It's so uh, I know some people have been tipping us lately because we're doing more lives. And so we're getting a little right. extra cash and I appreciate the tips. Keep them coming. We appreciate it. But if you choose not to, hey, we enjoy doing it, giving you guys a little ex- extra access to uh, Q and A's and some interactions with you guys. And uh, we really appreciate it. So subscribe to us over there. It is free. Let's go ahead and roll on to the PFL. It's starting off its first tournament. And of course, just like always, 
put the fucking heavies at the top. Come on, man. Can we get some love for the smaller First people? First off, it's not a tournament. It's a regular season. Eh, match it's like up. an entry into the tournament. <laughs> we all know what it is. It's an entry into the tournament. This is like kind of the beginning parts of the tournament. It is the first round, yeah. basically. Yeah. That's what you're talking about. Yeah, if you look at the main event, the main event is actually, if you're going to look at a heavyweight fight, it's a good heavyweight fight. Yeah. You know, Ante D'Elia has uh, been fantastic in the PFL. He didn't, he won this, he won the regular season and, you know, got the title and then had some injuries, had to pull himself out uh, of getting it back again. But now he's back and he's going up against a guy in Valentin Moldovsky who we've seen do very well. And he's going to do well, I believe, in the, with the style that Ante brings. Ante likes to be in the stand-up. Valentin actually likes to be in the stand-up for a lot of his uh, you know, fights and stuff. He can go to the ground. I, th- I do believe that he's better. You know, if, it, if he can get this fight to the ground and be in the top position, it's going to be an advantage. But then I would say it's an advantage for uh, Ante D'Elia to be in the top position over Moldovsky. They're very well matched. It's just that Ante D'Elia is a bigger body. Mm. Valentin Moldovsky is a hybrid heavyweight. He's going to weigh somewhere, let's say, 235 mm. to 238, I would think. Kay Velasquez Which is a good body. weight. Yeah, absolutely. A more muscle. <laughs> but he's fast. Yeah. And he is. It's going gonna, it's gonna to create problems for D'Elia in the fact that he is fast. You've got to really be working hard to keep up with that speed. And that is the advantage of being that hybrid heavyweight. But it's a, I think it's a great matchup. I think it's, it's one that, you know, looking at it, it's the one thing that I really liked with the, the PFL, you know, and Bellator merging together, PFL, you know, taking over Bellator. Josh, you talk about it all the time. You know, there's not any heavyweights. And let's be honest, you know, the PFL didn't have that many heavyweights. They had Heenan Fahea, who's, you know, freaking a monster. They had Golsoff. They had to lead. They have some good, but we're talking again in like five, six. Yeah. And so now right away, those five, those six now can face other people, five or six that are really good. And it just opens things up in that heavyweight division. So I think it's a great matchup. I would agree with you. Um, it's only a three round fight. It's not a five round yep. fight. I would have, if it was a five round fight, I would have went a lot harder in the paint for Moldovsky. I would have said, ex- yeah. I thought Moldovsky would have dominated probably starting from round one and a half, like round two, all the way through. But as this fight gets going on, because Moldovsky will wrestle you, he will hang on you, he will try to drag you to the ground, but he will set up his boxing and his kicks to get himself in. He is, he reminds me a lot of, not in the way he fights just because he comes from the Fedor camp, but he's a smaller heavyweight. He fights very fast pace and he's got big, he's got, he's got some power in his hands, but he's a very well, um, well versed heheavyweight. He doesn't rely just strictly on his standup. He doesn't rely strictly on his wrestling. He, like you say hybrid, He'll you mean, you mean smaller in size, but I look at hybrid also as he can wrestle and he can grapple. It's very oh, rare. Yeah. You find heavyweights that can do all of it and then have cardio. Yeah. You know, and so that's when I look at guys like Ryan Bader and I look at guys, you know, like Daniel Cormier, like in a Kane Velasquez, they were smaller, thicker, but they could do everything really well. And they had good gas tanks. And that's kind of where Moldovsky falls into that, that mix of fighters. Dalia is good. He's got power in his hands. He's got yeah. good cardio. It's decent. But it's like if you someone like Moldovsky puts you the could- pace on him. Push, push the pace on him as a way to, to break slow it down, down, and the punching yeah. power will start to go away. He'll load and up the here volume. and there, and volume. The, the volume's just going to drop. Yeah. So I'm gonna, obviously I'm going to lean towards Moldovsky only based on that. Like I've seen Moldovsky so many times grit through. I mean, with the with the Ryan Bader fight, he got dropped against Ryan Bader, came back and and sort of went and basically like try to try to get the fight back, but Ryan was able to keep it going. What's the yeah? Was it that way? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. Was it that way? <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Was it uh, him that got dropped or he dropped Ryan? He dropped Ryan no, early no. in the fight. No, Ryan dropped That's him. That's right. Ryan dropped Ryan him. Dropped okay. Him. I was trying to remember that if it was the other way around. I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know why. Anyways, but look, Moldovsky is this. He's a stud. He's going to put the pressure. delia has got a, He's got the power that he needs to just make sure that he's not spending too much energy trying to, to knock him out. Let the knockout yeah, happen. Well, but Dalia definitely has you know, the length and the power mm-hmm. to give him problems. Cause the, you know, his last, you know, loss was to Linton Vassell. 
Mm. And in that that fight, Linton Vassell, you know, doesn't have real fast hands, but length, and he does have power, mm. hurt him. And then once once the fight gets to the ground, Linton Vassell in the top position, look out. Yeah. No one, no one in the PFL's heavyweight tournament can be on the ground with Linton Vassell very long. And speaking of Linton Vassell, he's fighting uh, Dennis Goldsoff. This is going to be a fun know, fight. That's why. That's why. That's why I said it. Yeah. Yeah. Two big mountain men. These guys are huge. <laughs> These guys are enormous. Oh, come on. Linton Vassell, Linton Vassell is just put together. Like, I mean, you're not supposed to weigh what he weighs at 200 because he, you know, he goes all the way up to 260, but he'll fight somewhere in that 242, 243, 244, 245 range. And he don't have any fat on him. Mm-mm. You don't see heavyweights, you know, that that are fighting much that they don't have anything. Well, Linton Vassell is a ripped, just, just big body, strong, and in the top position on the ground. You don't see people get no. away from him. He's a big guy. He's He's got decent boxing, decent kickboxing. Like, he can stand with you and trade with you. Um, Goldsoff needs to be in the stand-up. Goldsoff That's needs to be advantage. in the stand-up. And Linton Vassell needs yes. to get this fight to the ground. That's exactly, and I wouldn't say like he is. There's no sense. It's not a big sense of urgency for him to get to the ground. But look, if you want to have a better chance of winning this fight, especially in a three round fight, get this fight to the ground as early as you can. Well, and and also, you you know, you got to look at it. You know, some people like it, some people don't. But they got that point system Mm. with the PFL and the fact that, hey, you know, you're getting extra points by finishing the fights early. You know, you get three extra points for the first round, two for the second, one for the third. But those extra points can match up to you getting into their postseason. So it's all important about what you do and how fast you do it. Yeah, a good. I mean, Lynn Vassell on the ground on top, submission wise, ground and pound wise, he's got it. He's got it, but he's got to get it there. The wrestling part for him is is it's not as fluid. He's not a fluid wrestler. Body well, he, he's not a wrestler that can that can chain wrestle and drop to the legs and no. come up. He's a body lock specialist as far as that's his way of getting the fight to the ground. Next fight, Liz Carmouche versus Juliana Velasquez. John, why are we seeing this fight in the beginning of the whole thing? It's to it, well, this is gonna, why this is my perspective. It's to eliminate one Bellator fighter. Bingo. You just said it right there. I don't want to put two Bellator fighters <clears throat> in the final. I'm just going to say, right, this is a third fight for these two. Liz has got the two wins. The first one was questionable, but the second one was absolute beautiful arm bar. Uh, that's the only two losses on Juliana Velasquez's record. But, you know, you're going to take a look and you got to say that, well, why is it that they're putting it? You just hit it. Well, we're going to get rid of one of them. Yeah. Uh, you know, see what can happen because they could still end up. You know, it could be where they could still end up, you know, getting into that postseason, even though they're matched up against each other. But it it does make it to where it's going to be more difficult. Well, then what happens when they fight? If they you have to fight again to get in, what will happen is uh, the, one of them will need a victory, like in terms of an early finish to get yeah, themselves in. Exactly. So, look, we've seen this fight. Liz, the first fight, didn't have the confidence the first couple rounds. She started gaining confidence as the fight went on. And Juliana kept kind of letting her into the fight. The second fight well, happened. Go ahead. No, I, I'm sorry. Please. Yeah. And then, and then that first fight ended, ended up ending in controversy, you know, with the stoppage and how it happened and still being there and all these things. Um, That happened. Then the second fight happened and Liz Carmouche ran away with it. Dominated yeah. from the beginning to the end. Got the takedowns, yep. controlled top positions. She Everything. understood what the weakness was. For Juliana, and that was when you had someone that made Juli- uh, made Juliana move backwards. She can't fight going backwards. She's got good power. She can do it, but it's... No, she's a, she has got to be a front foot fighter. Yeah, she's got to be someone who takes the center of the cage and pushes you around. And we saw that yeah. in the first fight because she was doing that in the first couple rounds. And as she started getting pushed backwards in the second fight, or in the later rounds, she started losing those rounds. And then the controversial stoppage, then that Liz just picked up where she left off and dominated the second fight. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Next fight. Well, this is the reason why you have Liz Carmouche against yeah. Juliana Velasquez. Is Dakota Decheva has been fantastic in the PFL. She looks great. She's uh, they've they put a lot of marketing behind her. 
Uh, I just watched a thing where uh, Dan Hardy was basically claiming that she's going to win this tournament, right? And, or, you know, the season. And I'm like, wow. But, you know, they have her going up against Lisa Mullen. Lisa's a tough girl. But obviously, you know, I think they want they want someone to come out on top of this. It really should be Lisa Malden should be fighting Liz Carmouche. Dakota mm. should be fighting Juliana Velasquez. That's the way I look at it because mm. I'm just saying, well, that's where you that's where you rank. You know? That's where you're at. So, but you know, Dakota here is uh she is looking good. She looked fantastic. She won the the uh, European mm. uh championship last year with the PFL. Uh, took the belt and a hundred thousand dollar yep. check. So good, good win for her. And look, she's ten and zero. She's got a ton of confidence. I will tell you, she is a violent, good fighting woman. She could, but she's twenty five. Mm -hmm. And this is my my whole thing is normally I really like the younger fighters coming in, you know, and uh, going against the older fighters. But like you say, women's kind of mature at a different rate in fighting than men do, mm -hmm. and Older is not as bad with the women, you know, for a while. And right now, Liz Carmouche, Juliana Velasquez, both are physically strong. Both are, you know, can fight with anyone, anywhere, on the ground, in the stand-up. So I look at this as, you know, Dakota, can, I think, is going to get the win against Lisa. Then it depends on who she goes up against because you got Kana Watanabe down there. You got you got a lot of, a lot of talent, even Jenna Bishop. Who is a phenomenal jujitsu practitioner? Awesome, undefeated, and most of her uh, wins are submission. <laughs> I want to say something. Um, look, say it. I've heard from I've heard from Gotta some be people. Honest. I, I'm going to be honest, and uh oh, we're in trouble. <laughs> it's, um, I've heard some from some people, and they've said that look. The higher ups at the PFL were pretty upset at the fact that the Bellator guys ran away with the Riyadh show. Really? Yeah, that they were they expected the PFL fighters to do better. So this is what we're gonna get for right now is you're gonna have the Bellator fighters fighting the Bellator guys for the PFL tournament style to basically see to make sure that there's enough PFL fighters that get involved. Let me ask you a question. I mean, I'm just mm -hmm. it's just the way I look at it, you know. If you if you buy a car and it was owned by somebody else, you know, before that, you know, who owns the car? Yeah, I do. Okay. So that's your fighter. Yeah. I don't I don't get every fighter on that card in Saudi Arabia, that's a PFL fighter. Yeah. I just, uh, this is the way I look at it. And it's, and I said this, I, I said this before I said what they, what it looks like they're going to start doing. And I think what they will do is what they're doing now is they are <clears throat> going to do that annual show champ versus champ. But eventually at the end, you're going to end up with Bellator fighting Bellator champions. <laughs> Cause you're going to have the, yeah. And, but look, there are, the like I said, I think tournament winner. scroll back up to the top, please. You've got, <clears throat> Dalia, you've got Goldsoft. Both of those guys, especially, and I'm going to be They're very good. upfront, in the heavyweight division have a good chance of beating yeah. Boldovsky and beating Linton Vassell. Where you run sure. into a problem with the PFL and the Bellator fighters fighting each other is the lower weight classes. Yes. The Johnny Eblins. Okay? Yep. You have the Johnny Eblin. You, I mean, I would have said Nemkov if Nemkov stayed at 205 because I don't think any of those guys in the 205 can beat him. But he's going to heavyweight now, and that's going to be, you know, he's at it. He'll end up fighting for the title next in Bellator. This going on right here, I like when you get down to the lower weight classes, you get to Juliana Velasquez, Liz Carmouche. I don't see any of the females in here that can beat, beat them. I will give Kana Watanabe a chance. A chance. I just, I don't know. She had her strike of, of beating Juliana Velasquez or Liz Carmouche. She's lost to both yeah, of I don't them. Think so. Yeah, you know, but she, I think I think I'm going to give her an opportunity. She was relatively new into Bellator when she had fought Juliana. Did Dakota fight Juliana? I believe she did. She did. I believe. Can you click on Juliana? I thought her first her first loss was against Liz. It was, and I thought she lost again after that. Maybe I'm wrong. I know she lost to. Uh... No, she didn't. No, no she lost no. to Liz twice. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, like I look at I look at that stylistically, that would be a good fight. 
but I, I thought I thought Juliana had had fought her already. No, I didn't think. But so. when I get into the lower weight classes, you know, I think that's where those 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 fighters are is going to be heavily weighed onto the onto the Bellator side. Guys like yeah. Usman, guys like Tofik, guys like Alexander Shabli. There's just they don't PFL doesn't have that they don't have that depth of those guys that can stand with those guys and compete with. Those no, guys. Well, in fact, they're the guy that won the tournament. You know, last year would be an OAM. Mm -hmm. He retired. Yeah, you know. And Clay Collard was, you know, the guy who was the uh, the, the runner-up, if you want to call it. He he went to the finals and lost to OM. Mm -hmm. And you saw what happened with, you know, against AJ, AJ McKee. McKee. And AJ AJ's yeah. been very clear that he may go back down to forty-five because he he understands. Like, look, I can dominate at one forty-five. One fifty-five for me is a challenge for me. He's challenging himself because he's done what he's needed to do at 145. But if you're going to start throwing a million dollars on the line every time I win a tournament, and he's like, Psh, I'll take the million dollars. Because at 145, I don't think there's anyone out there outside of getting clipped. I don't think there's anyone out there outside of the UFC that would give him a good go. Yeah, I agree. So, uh, but then you get into Marcelo Gohm versus Daniel James, two big guys. This is a rematch. It is a rematch, but it was supposed to be. Tyrell Fortune mm. going up against Daniel James, which was a rematch also. But Tyrell Fortune just pulled out of the fight, and so they moved Marcelo, who was one of the alternates. He is now facing Daniel Winch. You're right. It was a fight in Bellator. It was a fight that Marcelo Gohm was doing very well with the leg mm. kicks. He was eating up Daniel James's legs, but one shot from the big man, Daniel James, was all it took, and it ended that fight. So we're going to see if each guy can figure out, all right, I can't take those leg kicks. Okay, I need to be more careful in the stand-up once it gets to a certain point. You know, it's a, it's a good rematch. Heavyweight division, Blagoy. Uh, if, how you say his last name? Ivanov? Ivanov. 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 <clears throat> he had a, I, we always just called him Blagoy at AK because he trained at AK yeah, for so long. Blagoy. Versus Sergey Bilostini. 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 <laughs> but he, look at Sergey Belastini is a freaking tank. That dude is put together, strong. Look at Blagoy has got a lot of talent, but it's it's going in the opposite direction for him mm. right now. He's getting he's older. Not as fast. Yeah, he's gotten older. He's not. He, you know, his speed is kind of dissipated. Mm. He's still tough as hell, but his his ability to get the fight to the ground, which was where he was really skilled for a long time is not the same. He doesn't have the same takedowns uh, and the, his ability to chain wrestle together. He, I don't know if it's the, the stamina and what it takes, but he stay, he tends to stay in the stand up much more. Now it's probably not a good idea. You know, Bill Astigny, his last win was a spinning heel kick uh, knockout. Yeah. That just was, I think it went viral. The, the kid can fight he, and he is young, strong, and he, he's too dumb to not know what he doesn't know. Yeah. You know, as far as he's not afraid of anything, he will go after you. So this is a tough fight for Blagoy. There's some good fights on this, on the other card here, but you know, the one that I'm kind of most intrigued by is Dimitri Ivy versus Lucas Brennan. Yep. Lucas Brennan go. making a big step up in competition for him. I know that he's got a big win over, um, uh, Weber Almeida Weber. After getting his ass kicked for two rounds, it was able to land yep. the vicious knee. In the knee. third round. In the third round. He was able to knock him out. Vicious knee up the middle. Nicely done. Nicely executed. He's 9-0. and oh. He's young. He's the son of Chris Brennan, who actually just lives here in Frisco, right down the road from me. Yep. And uh, they have a great academy there. I think it's called Next Gen. Um, it's a great spot. Great great uh, crew of uh, fighters that come out of there. I know a lot of the um, fighters out of, uh, what's the gym down there? Fortis. Fortis, a couple of them come up there and train some grappling with uh, Chris Brennan and Lucas and uh, the crew that they have there. So this can be a good fight for him. It's a good challenge for him. See if he can get this. He's going to have to start opening up a little bit more on the feet and and really work. Hopefully he worked a lot on his wrestling, not getting stuck in the same routine of punch, punch, try to like do the step behind trip or anything that. You've got to start chain wrestling your stuff together if you're going to get these higher level quality guys down. Yeah, no doubt about it. But it's a matter of, you know, you take a look at a lot of these. Bryce Meredith at the you know the very first fight of the night. Bryce Meredith is a hell of a wrestler. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, going up against Ty Johnson, that's an interesting fight. And even Steve Mowry going up against the big wrestler in Oleg Popov, 
you know, Popov is 16 and one. There's a reason for it. He out wrestles everyone on the ground. Maori's not bad off his back. He's very few heavyweights are good off their back. He's actually one of the guys you can look at and say, he's not bad off his back. He's better in the top position, but not bad off his yeah, back. Yeah, but Maori being what, 6'8? Six, eight? Yep. 6'8, six, just some big, big guys. Tends to leave his chin a little high up in the air because he's punching down. Yeah. So he's got to be careful of that. But uh, look, he's talented everywhere. The size, the knees up the middle will be there. You know, uh, he's good at getting into the clinch and throwing those knees up the middles. If he gets on top of you, man, good luck. He's he's good on top. He's got heavy pressure. And off of his back, like you said, good submissions. Gilbert Burns trained. Ah, there you go. All right, hey, guys, that's going to wrap up our PFL talk as well. We've got a little bit of uh, some news that we're going to throw into this show. Uh, because, look, we don't want to spend a ton of time on it, um, but we definitely wanted to touch on it. Uh, go ahead there, Dave. What do you got for us? Yeah, so I wanted to start with uh, just a, a little bit of light, lightness around this, okay? So I don't know if you guys saw, but um, on Ariel's show, um, he had WWE superstars in the build-up to WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. He had them basically fight on his show. Um, <clears throat> there was Becky Lynch and Rhea Ripley. And I just thought it was interesting because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's unstaged as ariel wants it to look he posted on x that um that's what you know this is a shame this happened it will never happen again in my show blah blah blah. but, <laughs> but it's definitely staged i mean there's uh, no way. Like, um so, so i just wanted to get your reaction to you know this type of stuff happening on a show called the mma hour <laughs> first of all and then and then i want to get into mma stuff on the mma hour. <laughs> Uh, I think I just I just see that Ariel's not getting in between the two. <laughs> Get his He's ass like, kicked. I'm staying, out of this. I'm staying out of that, man. The girl on the right, yeah, she's freaking ripped, man. She's buff. She got more muscles than Ariel. What's... Hold it, hold it. The other one, Becky. This is Becky Lynch. She's the man. <clears throat> am I am I saying that right there, Dave? Yeah, Becky Lynch. Is she a man? Yeah, the man. She, no, oh, no but okay. Hey, look, you never know in these days. She's this Irish. day and age, you never know. Yeah. So, <laughs> just I wasn't sure if that was like you guys were just no, trying to hint to no, it. No. Like, no. no okay. Just, that's her. That's her nickname in this the whole man, thing. Okay. She's the man, the man, and like and mommy. That. Is that what it is? Uh, uh, mommy. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Jeez. Um. Yeah, mommy. So, <laughs> it's, but look, WrestleMania is coming up. I just uh, I just had dinner uh, last night with uh, Bobby Lashley, and he's leaving the, today this afternoon. It's funny because they got this big, it's a big, I didn't realize, I knew it was a big deal, John. I knew that WrestleMania, yeah. WrestleMania when I was a kid was a big deal. It's it's at a different level now than from when I was a kid. Oh, it's, it's but, a huge. But it's, it's a, yeah, it's a big deal. And, and I know it is because Dave constantly reminds me every year around this time how big it is. Okay, here's the question. Okay, this, this will say everything. How many WrestleManias have you watched? Oh, only like two, three when okay. I was a kid. Only two? Yeah, and I can't remember. Like, look, back then, I think they were pay-per-view. Well, I think it was, yeah. Yeah, no, I didn't have money for pay-per-view. <laughs> like, yeah, I like, either, just... No, I mean, I had to stay. I was the kid that had to stay up until midnight, and I never could. So I had to watch it because it was. It, it didn't come on until, I think, Saturday nights at midnight. It didn't come on yeah. at midnight. I remember I got so close one time. I fell asleep at the commercial right before it went on. Like they came, they came to the show, and then before they did their first match, they went to commercial. Fucking yep. fell asleep, woke up crying. Ow. I woke up crying. <laughs> I knew I'd missed it. I woke up crying. I was so mad. Uh, yeah, my dad's like, I tried to wake you up. I tried to wake you up and yeah. shake you and wake you up. He's like, well, you just wouldn't get up. I was like, Fuck. Dave, how many WrestleManias? Uh, how many have I watched? I think. Yeah. All, I think all of them since like two thousand. All of them. Jesus Christ. Jesus. And now you know how many? You know how many Levi's? WrestleManias I've watched? How many? Zero. Zero. Really? Uh, no, not zero. even as a kid. No. Damn. They, they didn't have WrestleMania when I was a kid. Yeah. Let's just be honest. I'm that old. <laughs> but I will say that I've watched one match out of any WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. One, and that was Hulk Hogan against Andre the Giant. Oh, yeah, that's I a did watch game. that one. Yeah. I think even my mom's watched that one. <laughs> okay, even there you go. So I'm, I'm right there with your mom. Even my mom's watched <laughs> that one. Uh, so go ahead. <clears throat> yeah. So anything else on? The wrestling part. No, I think no. Yeah, look, he played. He played. Ariel played into the heel thing, or not the heel thing. He played into it right. like this is. That's just not look at, that's He's do, he's doing doing his he's job. He's doing them, you know, a favor. Doing his job. He's giving them publicity too, and they're they're doing it for his show because there's people okay. that are watching his show because they're on it. So, um, so anyway, the show does get a bit more interesting. So, uh, Joaquin Buckley is on a show and he basically accuses Aero Hawani. I'm going to play the audio for you, but he does accuse Aero Hawani of like 
uh, low key stirring the pot. Um, and so obviously not the first one to do it. Um, I wanted to kind of get your thoughts here because it just seems to be coming um, more of a thing. I showed you guys before we started filming that uh, uh, the the basically that compilation. There's like a ton of them on YouTube with the compilations of people getting mad at Ariel. Um, and so wanted to get your reaction to what he was what he said here on Ariel Show. Here I'm going to play it for you. To be careful. What was I saying about the fighters in the UFC? A lot of things. What are you talking? I mean, what? Tell me right now. I'm. I want to hear. Well, just with a, a lot of fighters, man. You've been in the business for a long time. Uh, obviously, you have uh, the respect uh, what you do, and you do it very well. You got a lot of, uh, I say, facts, right, that you keep down uh, about the UFC and about different fighters. But me personally, I feel like when we come on your show, you try to use us as um, a weapon against the UFC, right, to so you use your platform, but you try to set us up low-key. Right. For real. With certain questions that that fighters you already know, if we have those conversations and what we try to talk about could have us get in trouble with what who we work for. Like what? Tell, give me I an example. Like, there's a lot of things, man. You know, you know better uh, for myself. For no, yourself. I, I don't because uh, I don't agree. What I'm talking about. I don't agree. Honestly, I don't agree. I mean, been doing the show since 2009. You think I'm trying to make the fighters look bad and, and do this show for 15 years? I've been doing this show. Um I have the fighters on because I love the fighters and respect the fighters and want to give them an opportunity to tell their story and, you know, be able to learn more. I want to learn more and I hope that other people learn more when they hear from you guys. So I'm not trying to weaponize anything. That would be crazy. And I would be wasting my life doing that for 15 years. That would be a futile mission on my part. The UFC is much bigger than me. Yeah, the... yeah, yeah, yeah. We all know this. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm happy that we're having yeah, this we conversation. All... Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Well, so do. You so then I put uh, there is an example, right? And um, you you really have to kind of trust your interpretation of these instances, right? Or based on your experience of what you interview with Nate, but <clears throat> hey, with Ariel, sorry. Um, but you know, like I say, I played a full ten minute compilation for you guys prior of just people getting mad at Ariel for um what they felt was provocative <clears throat> um things, and then the. The most recent one I uh, could find was where he was asking MVP about Dana White shooting down these um, these fun like walkout um, things that people that people like to do these creative walkouts and um, kind of asking MVP, you know, do you want me to just play that that part yeah, for you? Well? I also sure. couldn't tell how he felt about the walkout and if he's going to try to strip that away as well. He, he, he was asked about that in the Michelle Pajeda walkout, which was different than yours, but obviously unique. Yeah. I love that stuff. I want more of that stuff. Yeah. But he yeah. infamously or notoriously has said he doesn't like that stuff. So what do you think based on what he said? Yeah, he seems like he's, you know, he's against it. And this is, uh, you know, something I, I, I always suspected in particular. You know, any, my, anytime I thought of my, or seeing myself in the UFC, I thought, you know, I, I may piss him off a little bit. Um <laughs> <laughs> but um i think at the end of the day if i if i do what i do in the cage on the other side um I, he he will allow you know for even things that annoy him to to, to exist in my opinion so I, again i just gotta keep making sure i put on good performances so that it, it you know it's almost like um, i have to pay in the meter yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> i got, I got and those you know ko's and flashy you know uh attractive wins yeah, and I think we can wrap, we can wrap that. Yeah, everything he just said mm -hmm. is that's that's the fact. Yeah, look, you got you got to take go back and take a look at. I'm talking about the walkouts right now. I'm not talking about the aerial thing. Um, you know, back when Dana first started with the UFC, and you know him and Lorenzo were uh, trying to figure things out. Look, they were putting a lot of money into walkouts, big time fireworks. I can tell you that, you know, I stood there at, at UFC 30 and I was in the Mark Edis arena before, you know, this is the day before the fights and, you know, Lorenzo's down there and I'm standing there talking to him. He says, you, do you realize that what you're going to see right now is going to cost me $50,000? And I go, what's costing you $50,000? He goes, for the fire marshal to see the fireworks that we're going to use, uh, I, I've got to do a run through. It's costing me fifty thousand dollars for that firework display, and so it's going to cost me a hundred thousand dollars because then I'll do it on the night for Tito's walkout. You know, so they do the firework. I said that's fifty thousand yeah. dollars. 
know, but you know, they did try to make a big thing of the walkouts. And if you remember, BJ Penn kind of kind of put his own spin on the rock because they wanted this, you know, cool walkout. BJ Penn sprints. He sprints down the thing right into the cage, ready to go. But they did try to do that. And, you know, for a while, it, they were spending quite a bit of money at a time when they couldn't spend it. And so they just went to the straight walkout, kind of like boxing. You know, it was just a, hey, we're going to we're film guys. And it stuck. And it's just, that's the way Dana looks at it. And that's his style. But when you perform, when you put on, you know, exciting fights, take a look at a guy named Israel Adesanya. Has he had some fancy walkouts? Yeah. He did that whole dance thing before fighting Whitaker in, in Australia. That whole thing, you know, he's had the, the you know, Undertaker one. He's done all that. Michael Venom Page is absolutely right. You perform for him. You put on great fights. Guess what? You want to do something special in your walkout? Okay, we'll do it. Yeah, he'll give you a little, like, I know this terminology has been used, and Dana says he doesn't do this. But he'll give you a little bit more leash <clears throat> yeah. to go ahead and do things. Well, no one's on a leash. No one's on a leash, but <laughs> he'll allow you to go out there and do certain yeah. things. And that's, yeah. I mean, there's that old saying, if you're a salesman at a car dealership, if you're the number one salesman in the company, you can take the owner's hat and take it out of the middle of the street and shit in it. Shit you, he ain't firing you. Right. It's when you become the second and the third and the fourth best salesman. You have no say now. You do what I tell you and do it the way I want you to. That's right. The same thing applies to this. I think where we're getting off a little bit on this is that like with, with Joaquin Buckley, what he said was you try to make the fighters look bad. And I completely disagree. He's not making the fighters look bad. I don't agree with that. Yeah. I don't agree with that at all. Ariel does not make the fighters look bad. What Ariel does is if you go back and how he prefers the question uh, for MVP is Dana's going to take this away from you. Like it doesn't have to be about Dana every single time. Yeah. Okay. And you know, by asking a question like this that, and I thought MVP prefaced it. I I thought he answered it very eloquently. He did a great job Perfect. of like, no, I understand. This is what it's going to be like. You know, I've got to make my way in. I've never fought for this company. I have to tread lightly, you know, and uh, ask permission and figure out what I can get away with and yeah. do what I can. Yeah. Hey, it doesn't matter what you've done for other promotions. Yeah. You're now working with them. They have their way of doing things and you're going to have to fit within that. Yeah. And so asking the question the way he did and some of the other ones from back in the past is... It's a, it's a, it's almost like a, I got you question. And, and I think, look, some of it though is considered to be good journalism and I'm okay with it. So there's going to be hard questions and sometimes he'll ask those hard questions, but there's also a time and a place. Let's go back to when he had asked the Yoel Romero situation to Dana White, when he said, well, you know, when you said you'll take care of him, what does that mean? Yeah. That's none of your business. And I get that you, you want to ask it, but also too, not asking it in front of. But don't be, but don't be upset when the answer is it's none of your business. But then on top of that, though, John, like there's also a time and a place. If you'd have got Dana outside, probably before or after that, and said, "Hey, like, what do you mean by take care of him? Like, like, uh, give him a little extra cash on the side, maybe, maybe push him a little bit more towards a title shot." Like, you know, not everything off the record, but let's just say, like, you know, are we looking? Is it going to be financially, or is it going to be in terms of? you're going to get taken care of with the fight that you want or direction towards a title shot. Like those are, that's a, that's a definitely, a definitely a different way to, to, I guess, ask the question, not in front of everybody. And that's a stab. And I think that's kind of where some of the fighters are in the history of the fighter, like in terms of fighters asking que- uh, them being asked questions by Ariel, that's what they're getting at. Why are you asking me questions? You know, they may jeopardize my relationship with with the promotion this is how i make my living this is the people i work for. yes and it's and that's yeah. and you know the fighters are going to be like fuck man like you're really putting me on the spot because if i hesitate too long that now that gets perceived like as i'm thinking that doesn't of, look good it doesn't look good yeah. now if i say what i want to say doesn't look good either look there's there i can say this and it's funny i just had a long conversation with a good friend of mine uh this morning is we do things that we love to do. Ariel does his job. He loves to do his job. I love to be a fighter. I loved fighting. The company that you work for, though, doesn't mean that you love the company. You love fighting. And sometimes those companies can make you not love fighting. 
Oh yeah. And so the other, the same could be said about being a fighter working with, with media can make you not love media. And it shouldn't be that way. We should love, <laughs> we should enjoy the interviews, like the excitement of being interviewed by whether it's Ariel or Brett Nakamoto or whoever, right? Yeah. We should I'm love that because that means show. that we probably are winning. And so, and then, you know, people like we're talking about fighting for the promotions. I loved fighting for Strike Force. I loved fighting for Pride. I loved in the early days fighting for the UFC. The second time around, I kind of started seeing for what it was. It changed quite a bit. But but you were also in a position where you had been so many places. Mm -hmm. And you were more you were more uh, I don't want to say grown up. You're more mature as far as a businessman. And so it was a it, it was a different way of looking at mm -hmm. it too. But my exactly, there definitely was. I just I didn't love it started to make me not like fighting anymore. Well, media, yeah. when asked questions that way, can make you not love it. Can make you not want to love doing interviews. Can make you not. And that's kind of what Joaquin Buckley was like. Look, I'm going to do this because you have a big platform. You've built a big platform. You've been around for a long time. But I don't like doing it with you because you, I almost feel like you're getting me with these gotcha questions. And whether Ariel wants to admit it or not, and then some of it is good journalism. Some of it is, I think fighters will take it out of context. Yeah. But, you have to understand what they're coming from too. They can't say anything that's going to put their money making. But you have to, yeah, it has to go. You have to look at it both ways. In the fact that Ariel, at times, I'm sure, you know, kind of, he does, you know, at at times ask questions, you know, like you saw with the MVP, where it's like, hey, you don't have to make this about the UFC or Dana. You know, you can ask the question about. Let's talk about your walkouts. Why? Why was it? You know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be well. You know. Uh, I'm pitting you now against the boss, mm -hmm. but it's also, he's in a tough position. You know, Errol does a good job with interviews. I, I've always said that I've always thought that he's a good interviewer actually. And for the most part, he makes, you know, people feel good, but you know, how many fighters are there, Josh? And, and not all fighters get along. Mm -mm. Okay. And you know, you interview one and there's another one out there that uh, doesn't like that that guy and he doesn't like you and then you interview the other one then all of a sudden the other one says you're an asshole you you why did you, why did you interview that there's sometimes you just can't that's win. true <laughs> you know you know i have it all the time you know people say you know oh you hate the ufc and it's like you know i'm glad that you're in my head okay because it's just great to know that you perceive something and it's okay if you perceive it you know but i'm being i love the ufc i help make the ufc okay i absolutely love it now, that doesn't mean that I will not say when I think they're wrong about something. Mm -hmm. That's just the way I am. And that's just what I'm going to do. But because I say, oh, I think, I think they're absolutely wrong for that. Doesn't mean I hate the fucking company or I hate the fact, you know, the, the, the letters of, the, I love the promotion. I love what they do. I think they're, they're absolutely the best at what they do. Combat sports anywhere. It is the greatest promotion ever, you know? It just is. They have done that and gotten to that. But you're going to have people, no matter what, when you're Ariel, you're going to have people saying that you're you're doing things because you hate them. Well, doing what he does, like if you want to be the guy that does the interviews, like if you're a Megan Olivia, if you're, you know, um, if you're Ariel, whatever it is, if you want to be that person, that's why, John, when we've done interviews, you know me. When I go, when I'm working fights and I have to be the backroom reporter, I fucking hate it because yeah. I know exactly. I know what goes through both fighters minds. Cause I've been there. I've seen media people go and do the interview with somebody that I'm fighting. And it seems very skewed to like favor them, which is what it's supposed to be. But I feel like now yes. you're their friend, but it pisses you and off. And then now you come to me and say something very similar, oh. but different, but yeah. like it's, it's your, you're now trying to instigate point. something out of me and I get it. That's yeah. your job. But I hated being that person in the back. I used to tell our producer, I don't want to yeah. do it. Like, can we just do something else? Can I just do like, can I just do um, like a lead up to like, hey, this is how our camp was, whatever it was. I didn't want to be in the back interviewing both fighters because a lot of times I know them. I've trained with them and I know that I'm getting older and a lot of those people I've trained with now are gone. But it's it has to do with. I just know them, you know, and we see each other in passing a lot, or we've had breakfast together. Or we've, we've talked over coffee. Or we've done fighter interviews. I don't want to be part of that part of it. And it's, you know, I know that limits my job, 
pretty much, you know, but what I, what I can do, <laughs> it just is a very uncomfortable position. Wow. So when I see what Ariel's, what does, what he does, I can see why fighters go yeah. hard on him a little bit here and there. But you're I, also, I get that part of it. You're also going to be stuck in those positions you are. at times because as soon as, you know, they look at it like, well, you don't like the UFC anymore. I, I don't think, I don't think that Ariel dislikes the UFC. No, it's what makes I him money. He, hello. Like, that's my point. It's called MMA the, hour. I know he has yeah. wrestler, pro wrestlers on there, but it's called the MMA Hour. And I've said this, I don't yeah. know how many times. Without the UFC. It's not the UFC, guys. I, like, I think like the point is, is that he, is he, is he trying, I think Joachim Buckley's point there is that like, he, if he, he's not worried about the UFC necessarily as a company, but it's, it's the people that, that are in charge of his career. Yeah, the, bo the boss. Yeah. And that's, you got matchmakers, you have Hunter Campbell, you got Dana White, you got all these people that are over you in that position and you don't want to say something that's going to piss any of them off and you never know mm -hmm. what it's going to. Mm -hmm. You never know. That's you don't know. That's the other thing. Like I can tell you, I don't know how many times I did an interview. Dude, I've, I've said things on this podcast mm -hmm. with you where I've had my boss yep. call me and say, what the fuck? You know, it's like, what? You know, oh, yeah. I didn't think I said anything wrong. Yeah. No, you know? I, you, like, it's you, not like I, it's not like I told a lie or anything. When, I didn't. When I was but, fighting for Strike Force, I got calls from Coker all the time. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck did you say? Yeah. And he's like, and I mean, we got it. Like, we we went back we'll and get forth. into it. Yeah, we got into yeah. it. I was like, all right, I, I see your side, but I want you to see my side. And yeah. it's hard to tell your boss to see your side, just so you know. It's yeah. not, it's hard. He doesn't want to see your side. But that's the that's the I think that's the point that Joaquin Buckley was trying to make was yeah. You you ask us questions that. Are, Especially with the MVP lead me one, into a position for someone that is skewed. Like, is Dana going to take that away from you? Or it, that's not where I want to be. I don't want to be in this situation where you ask me, ask me about my fight, ask me about what my future is, ask me about my kids, ask anything like along those lines, right? It has to do with fighting. Let me, you know, or even my family, whatever it is. I, some fighters don't like to answer that either. Yeah. But I'm simply saying that it gets into you start getting into what the decisions are made above you. That's when fighters start saying, "Hey, man." You're asking questions that are jeopardizing my relationship with the company that pays me. Now, where, like, yeah. would you be as inclined to answer questions? Like if it was someone asking you, Ariel, that's kind of where the fighters are at. I'm not, I'm not saying that he's, I don't think that he's trying to take down fighters. I don't think that at all. No, Cause that's what Joaquin Buckley that's, said. I don't think no. so at all. This is what makes him his money. This is what exactly. brings people to his site. And he's right, you know, when he says, I've been doing this for 15 years, you know, why, why would you think? And it's like, he's not trying to take people down if that's what he's trying to build. Yeah, no, I get that. I no. get that part. Um, but I've said this, I don't know how many times. Look, the whole thing could go away for Ariel. I mean, he would end up doing maybe something else if Dana just said, if you're, if you're a fighter, if you go on his show, it's over. I mean, he, he doesn't have to say it that he way. He doesn't have to say it's over. Yeah. All he's got, I, I've, I've said it forever. All he's got to do is say, all right, you can you can go on his show and talk. Just don't ever expect a bonus. Yeah, it ain't happening. And that's it. All goes away. So yeah. uh, look, Arrow's got a he's got a tough job, man. He's got a tough job to try to to get interviews with both sides. That's tough. He's got to make sure that the interviews, you know, do well. Uh, and he does a great job of that. I understand where the fighters co are coming from because of past experience with Ariel. Like it, there is a little bit of that, like you know, those questions. But fighters tend to overreact. That's another. And just a tiny bit. And, um, but he's also got to ask the hard questions sometimes. And he wants to know the hard questions, which is good. I, I tip my hat to him for that as well. But uh, sometimes it can be a little, you put me in a bad spot. And he's, it's hard for him to see it because he doesn't see it that way. He sees it as being a yeah, journalist. Yeah, he doesn't look at it that way. Yeah. You know? So, all right, we've, uh, we've uh, beat that <laughs> shit to death. Have we beat it up? Yeah, beat it up. All right, guys, go to WayneInMerch.com. WayneInMerch.com. Pick up some of our apparel over there. Uh, some shirts and T-shirts are up there. Sweaters. It's becoming, it, although it was a thunderstorm last night here in Texas, with some hail last night. I had to move the cars in the garage. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, the weather's getting nice, man. It's 75 today. Looking good. Feeling good. That's right. Looking and uh, John, take us away, man. Hey, for everyone out there, please do us a favor. Tune in to all of the fights. Look at the PFL on Thursday. Look at the UFC on Saturday. And get yourself ready for UFC 300 because we're going to start going over some of the lines on betting. <laughs> and maybe Josh and I can help you win just a little bit of money.
maybe. <laughs> for everyone out there, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you.